Welcome back to World Traveler. In today's program, we are beginning another tour to Europe. Checking in at Honolulu Airport, and it's going to be a long journey, but that's okay because it's going to be exciting. Today, we are going to take you to the first city in our Central Europe tour, and that is Heidelberg in the southern part of Germany. It's really a quaint town, but first we got to get there, so we fly overnight and then overnight again to Europe, landing in Frankfurt, and there we pick up our baggage. We rendezvous with our bus that will take us from Frankfurt down to Heidelberg. It's a pretty easy journey. Just takes about one hour on the freeway, and we are ready to go. Passing the Sheraton Hotel right at the airport, in a couple of weeks, we're gonna be back at the Frankfurt Airport, staying overnight at that Sheraton Hotel. But for now, we're just beginning our journey through Central Europe. We'll be covering Munich, Salzburg, Vienna, Budapest, and Prague later in this journey. But for now, we're starting out in the beautiful city of Heidelberg. We get to the hotel pretty early and start out with breakfast. That was pretty convenient and we rest up a little bit and then head out and take a walk and see some sights. Heidelberg is one of the prettiest and best preserved towns in all of Germany, set in picture postcard perfection alongside the Neckar River with a classic castle towering above. Filled with old world charm, it's almost like a fantasy version of an ancient German town or something dreamed up by Disney but this is the real thing. Heidelberg's historic center of picturesque early 18th century buildings is about one mile long and four blocks wide. It's an ideal sized pedestrian zone to explore on foot. Three days here can be easily filled with walks through the old town streets and into the main squares, visiting shops, restaurants and bars and of course exploring the castle up on the hill. A three-day visit will also leave time for a boat ride on the Neckar River or the Rhine to some nearby quaint villages. Most people who come through Heidelberg on a bus tour of Europe unfortunately only get a quick look at the castle, a snapshot glimpse of the town below, and then reboard the bus to leave town. They don't experience the genuine old world charm of the city itself, which is a crying shame because this town is well worth visiting for several days. Heidelberg has a pleasant old fashioned appearance with charming four story buildings that share a similar architecture of matching facades and harmonious earth tone color schemes topped with clay tile roofs. No two buildings are exactly alike and yet they all blend seamlessly in a simple Baroque style. While the exteriors may be centuries old, they are maintained, of course, spotlessly with fresh paint and modern fixtures. The shop interiors are totally contemporary, if not futuristic, with all the latest goods on sale. Numerous restaurants will delight you with their gourmet fare and their tasty beer. This is the most significant historic city in Germany that was not damaged during World War II. Allied commanders earmarked Heidelberg to become their post-war headquarters, so they deliberately avoided bombing this historic gem. Nearly all other significant German cities suffered severely from the fighting, so most of the nation's historic looking buildings in these towns are reconstructions. But in Heidelberg, these are the originals, completely undamaged. Ironically, the well-preserved historic town center is actually a result of extensive war damage from much earlier times. Here we are just one block away from the main street and the main square, and yet it's already a very quiet atmosphere. It's mostly a pedestrian zone. Uh, the few cars allowed in here have special permits. They either live here or they work here. And now notice the buildings. Look around at all these buildings and what you'll see is a fairly kind of a uniform appearance in terms of height and styles of building. 
Uh, the facades are all similar. There's no two that are exactly alike. There's no two that are identical, but you'll see the similarity. Now, how could this happen? What have we got here? How did this city develop in such a way that it's so harmonious? Hmm? Strong zoning well, a strong zoning code has maintained it, certainly, in the modern age, that's for sure. Uh, right down to the color of the paint that you can use for the building. But the way it was created is quite an interesting tale. Uh, this happened, the roots of this city are Gothic. So medieval, Middle Ages, 12th century, 14th century. The street patterns were established, in the, as you see today, at that time in the Middle Ages. But something happened in, uh, it was in um, 1689. The French came and invaded Germany. Louis XIV's armies came in. And in 1689, they destroyed Heidelberg completely. They, they leveled the city, flattened it, and all the buildings were destroyed, except for the Zumritter, where you had dinner last night, some of you. That's, that's the only Renaissance building left in town. Everything else is gone, just a pile of rubble. The castle was heavily destroyed. Uh, some of the buildings survived that attack, but you see the walls that are broken up there. So what happened then? They rebuilt the city in the early 1600s, all in a similar style, in the Baroque style. When you get into the early 17th century, this is the era of the Baroque. And what you see today is from that time period. So we're looking at structures that are 300 years old and all built up, like I say, around that same period and in this wonderful, harmonious way, and then not destroyed since then. World War II, as I mentioned, uh, there was treaties and special deals that saved the town of Heidelberg. So too bad that there was a destruction of the old Gothic town, but at least it resulted in this marvelous Baroque town being built in its place. And it goes for blocks and blocks. A fascinating tale that goes back a thousand years. Built from the 12th through the 16th century along a regular grid street pattern. The roads may have been laid down even earlier during the first century since the Romans established a permanent camp here and they were noted of course for their engineering skills in laying out rectangular city plans. One can actually glimpse much further back in time all the way to the Stone Age for the remains of the earliest known human culture in Europe were found here in 1907. A Homo erectus specimen dating about 550,000 years ago called the Heidelberg Man, which suggests that people have been continuously living in this region for eons. It's believed that first settled village was started here in about the fifth century. One of the more significant historic events was the construction of the huge castle on the hill, begun in the early 14th century. 200 years later, the castle was greatly expanded in the Renaissance style, firmly establishing Heidelberg as the center of government for a vast surrounding area. When completed, the castle was considered one of the most beautiful in Europe and today it's the city's major visitor attraction. Germany's first university opened in Heidelberg in 1386 and it's still an important part of the town. Heidelberg grew peacefully until the 17th century when several major wars in Europe broke out between Catholics and Protestants complicated by foreign invasions including brief control by Sweden in 1633 through 34. Well, Heidelberg survived all of that until a massive invasion by the French in 1688, led by Louis XIV. He claimed control over this vast region in his ongoing campaign to expand the borders of France. The entire old town was flattened at that time and the castle was partly destroyed by French cannon bombardment. Survivors rebuilt the city in the early 18th century with all of the new homes constructed in a similar style, a simple version of the German Baroque. 
Most of the buildings that we see today are from that narrow time period. So we're looking at structures that are about 300 years old, yet built up simultaneously in a remarkably harmonious way. Miraculously, there has been no further damage from warfare, fire, or natural calamity. Modern developments have been kept away from this old part of town, thanks to enlightened planning and a strict zoning code which limits the kinds of construction that can take place here. Today the old town is about 20 blocks long, stretched out in a picturesque way along the Necker River, so there are ample nooks and crannies to keep you busy exploring for a couple of days. Most of this area is a pedestrian zone. It's the longest in Germany when it was established in 1978. They claim this was the first major pedestrian zone in Europe. So you can really enjoy a relaxed strolling without any cars or trucks getting in your way. The main lane is the Hauptstrasse, which extends the entire length of the old town and is lined with shops and restaurants, bars and cafes throughout its entire length. This is one of Europe's greatest streets for walking and will be your main focus of activity, along with the castle. So start out your first day with a walking tour in the old town, perhaps right in the main square. Get an early start with a walk in the Marktplatz the main square, and the little alleys around this peaceful spot. The shops are just opening at 9 o'clock, so this is a fine time to be out strolling as you watch the day begin and the city come to life. Standing in the middle of the Marktplatz gives you a fine perspective on the heart of town with the Holy Ghost Church, the Heiligeistkirche, on one side and the old city hall on the other. This Gothic church was built in the early 15th century with the pretty red sandstone that's so typical of Heidelberg construction. You can climb the church tower for a small fee. It's really not that difficult to climb to get up to the top of the church tower. You go up a series of staircases, so it's real easy, just like a normal staircase. And really, it just takes five or 10 minutes. It's not a strain at all, and you can stop and rest along the way as you're climbing up if you need to. Well, you arrive at the top at the platform, and you're able to walk all the way around the platform and get views looking out in all directions from the top of the Holy Ghost Church. Wonderful view of the river down below and the bridge, and of course, all of the clay tile rooftops of the city. They are picturesque beyond your imagination. This is really as good as it gets in looking into an old town. From the top of the church tower, you get the perfect view looking out in all directions into the heart of old Heidelberg. Notice the view of the castle up on the hill looming and dominating the town. And there's several other church spires that you can see from the top of this highest spire in town back down the broad staircase, and then out the door, and you're back in the marketplace. There are little shop stalls built into the wall of the church between the buttresses in a tradition that has been carried on here since the Middle Ages. Typical of most European towns, the marketplace has always been the main square, hosting a variety of activities from food sales to public executions. People are still drawn here to the outdoor tables set up for eating, drinking beer, and watching other people. And on Wednesdays and Saturdays, there's an outdoor farmer's market that goes until about 2 p.m. with plenty of fresh fruits, vegetables, and flowers to buy, cheeses, and you might have a picnic later in the day or just browse and watch the locals in action. These outdoor markets are always a great highlight of your visit and you might even want to schedule your itinerary so that you're here at that time on a Wednesday or a Saturday. And if you are here at those days, be sure to get down to the Market Square and have a look. It's a fine opportunity to take some pictures or just hang out. Even if you're not buying any of the foods, just browse around and have a look.
And you'll notice this statue up on the column in the middle of the market plots. It's a statue of Hercules. Muscular, brawny body, standing at repose. He's got his club. There's a lion's skin. This is Hercules in all of his grandeur. And this, too, is carved from that characteristic red sandstone. Well, the main street reaches out from the marketplace in both directions, and you'll be drawn irresistibly down this alluring Hauptstrasse, the high street, with one shop after another in a lineup of historic buildings that continues for a mile. The old facades with modern interiors make for a winning combination even if you're not a shopper. There's plenty of cafes and snack bars along the way to keep you fueled. I want to walk us just down a couple of side alleys for a block or two, just right over here to get a little bit of a different character of this town. So this city is almost like a living museum. These buildings, it's like right out of Disneyland, but it's the real thing. One of the only few examples in Germany that survived all the bombing. And so on the ground floor, you've got a lot of offices, businesses, lawyers, architects, and little cafes. And then upstairs is the residences. Cornmark Square is just down here. And there's a bank on that square that's opening just about right now. And I know a lot of you would like to uh, get some money. And you're prepared to change some money. And there's some more interesting things to look at as well on that square, too. And already, here's the corn marked. The Corn Mark Square, where they sold corn in the old days. Now it's just a beautiful square, all stone cobble paving. Wow, this is built to last. This will last another 500 years. The way they're taking care of these buildings is really fabulous. So there's the cable car. That, that's going to take us up top onto the castle uh, a little bit later this morning after we've dealt with the laundry. Uh, we'll come back here at about uh, quarter of 10 and go on up to the castle. Uh, let's go over this way. The bank is on the corner. So there's the bank. Some of us have to change money. It's our first full day in Germany. Go ahead and put your money in the machine there. OK, and hit a button. You put your American currency in the machine. And out spits German currency. And you just got to keep feeding the machine. And the exchange rate is just as good as in the bank. Hit the jackpot. Just like Vegas. So Pearl is just feeding that machine with money. And out pops the foreign currency. She went into the bank and the teller said, no, no, take the cash outside. Uh -huh. So that worked? Have a nice time. Yeah. They really have a nice day. <laughs> Friendly machine. So uh, come on over here to this corner. I just want to uh, show you a couple of bars here. A couple of famous student pubs. So right here behind me on the corner is a couple of bars. One of them says Seppel, uh -huh. and the one next to it is the Red Ox. Uh -huh. These are the two very famous student pubs in town, the university students. So if you want to catch some local atmosphere, come on back in the evening. And they both offer traditional bar meals and lots of beer and occasional nighttime music. The Red Ox was featured in that classic operetta, The Student Prince which helped make Heidelberg even more famous in the early 20th century. And again, in that Hollywood film version, it was made in 1954, featuring Anne Blythe and the dubbed-in singing of Mario Lanza, in which the young prince is sent away to Heidelberg University for a final fling, falls in love with a commoner bartender, but must ultimately return to his proper station in life. This lyrical operetta enhanced Heidelberg's romantic image, which had been established earlier by poets such as Goethe, who called it an ideal landscape, and Brahms, who composed lullaby whilst sitting on the riverbank. The great British painter Turner painted fiery sunsets here, and Mark Twain praised the town so much in A Tramp Abroad that he really began the modern era of tourism with his faithful readers coming over in great numbers. You can walk beyond these two bars after comparing their brews. Karlsplatz is another one of the major squares in the heart of Heidelberg. In the middle of the square is this beautiful fountain with ramps and globes that 
symbolizes the universe and the planet Earth with the different stars and moons and planets circling around it. It's surrounded by grand Baroque palaces, which are now part of the university and serve some other functions. There's a pastry shop at one end called Cafe Gundel, and they have got some tasty treats that you would certainly enjoy. Well, here you can take your pick from a variety of hearty breads or some sweet pastry tarts or get a cake or you can have a light meal actually. This cafe has got seating outdoors on the Karlsplatz or there's a lot of tables indoors that are quite comfortable as well and they too have a view of the Karlsplatz. And then there's the basic takeout counter. This is a full service bakery it makes a great snack, whether it's the middle of the morning, middle of the afternoon, or any time of day. And you can sit down and have some tea, have some coffee to go with it, or have a beer. They've got really a nice atmosphere here at the cafe, and you might want to stop by here. It's just around the corner from the main market plots. It's only three short blocks. It takes you a couple of minutes to walk over here to Carl's Plots. One of the palaces is now a university science building, uh, Academy of Sciences. It was first built in 1717. And then a couple of doors further down is an old townhouse that was built in the 18th century. On the riverside of the square, you'll find the Palais Boisere, typical Baroque palace. Underneath Karl's Plots, there is actually a parking garage. It's part of a subterranean highway system. There's a road that goes underneath part of the old convenient. It looks like a very ancient square that's mostly pedestrian, but surprise, down below it's a big parking garage. There's a nice view of the castle looking up above the palaces on the edge of Karlsplatz. If you walk two blocks beyond Karlsplatz, along the main street, the Hauptstrasse, you'll come across a surprising museum. It has nothing to do with Germany, it's the cultures of the world. This small anthropology museum does have quite a fine collection, especially of artifacts from New Guinea, of all places. Not quite what you'd expect to run into when you're walking around in Heidelberg, perhaps. But this takes you out of the present and into a remote and rural culture, the island of New Guinea. And also there is a nice Asian collection here as well some Chinese costumes, artifacts, jewelry, clothing, shoes, various kinds of items from China, from Asia, and other parts of the world. So when you're walking through Heidelberg and looking for a change of pace, something different, well, come on down to the Anthropology Museum at the end of town and enjoy your visit and then get to the far end of the town, just three blocks further. The Hauptstrasse ends at an impressive gateway called the Karls Tor on the eastern edge of the old town. There are some quaint little alleys in this corner of town towards the river, so you might do a little meandering back and forth, observing the details of each unique building and seeing some slices of daily life here in Heidelberg. This is a local residential neighborhood. There's a few modern apartment buildings mixed in. You'll see families out for a walk, just carrying on with their daily life. You'll find some real food bargains here as well. You can get a simple meal like a kebab. That's always a bargain kind of a meal that you run into throughout Europe. Basically, it's uh, Turkish or Greek in origin, the gyros the revolving meat going around on a spit. Usually it's a combination of pork and lamb and chicken, or you can specify you just want a chicken kebab, or you can get a vegetarian dish, and the prices are always very reasonable in these kebab houses. Or, on the other hand, you can sit down at a full service German restaurant along the Hauptstrasse. For example, the White Swan Tavern. This is a classic spot, rustic wooden interior, simple wooden tables, waitress service by friendly staff, 
and delicious foods. Particularly you'll get the classics like the sausage, a bratwurst or knockwurst with potatoes, sauerkraut, maybe wash it down with a good local beer. Walking along the Hauptstrasse, you're likely to come upon a street musician here and there, so do yourself a favor and listen for a few minutes and then give a nice tip. When the sun goes up and the moon goes down, I'll be there. I'll be You'll also run into sidewalk artists engaged in creating some original oil paintings perhaps or watercolors, perhaps modern interpretations, contemporary art. You'll find vendors selling all kinds of little knickknacks and doodads. <laughs>